We've had the Republican House since 2011 in a massive historic victory in 2010. And John Boehner, you should resign, but you won't because your pathetic ego gets in the way. You're way over your head. You're cutting deals behind the scenes with Obama and Pelosi and Reid under your stewardship as Speaker of the House. CNSNews.com had a, a wonderful piece. The debt has increased almost $4 trillion, and it's going to increase more because of your budget, the McConnell, Boehner, Reid, Obama budget. They negotiated this budget, ladies and gentlemen, while they were campaigning this summer, telling you that they're going to fight to repeal Obamacare. They ran commercials. Every damn one of these candidates, we're going to repeal Obamacare. The people hate Obamacare. The people don't want Obamacare. Obamacare is ruining their health care. And they said they're going to vote to repeal it. And they just voted to fund every damn penny of it. And they have voted to fund every damn penny of it since the Democrats passed it in 2010. And no, they're not going to do anything about Obama's imperial amnesty. You want to know why? Because Obama did the heavy lifting for them. The Republicans are all in on amnesty. What do you think they're getting their tens of millions of dollars for in the campaigns to defeat conservatives or any challengers from the millionaires and billionaires in their back pockets, from the U.S. Chamber of Crony Capitalism, from all kinds of sleazy outfits? And then they pretend that this is a big, important kick to the economy. Damn liars. And they pretend this is the future of the Republican Party. Right. You camouflage your own dirty dealing and cronyism as if it's going to help the Republican Party or the country. The greatest danger for the Republican Party is its impotence and its irrelevancy. And the people who are responsible for that are the current leadership of the Republican Party and the Republican bureaucracy, like this Rinch Priebus. And as long as this Bush family and these Bush staffers hang around, the people who tried to defeat Ronald Reagan, not once but twice, as long as they're given free time on the media to endlessly trash conservatives, to endlessly support their favorite rhino candidates, it's going to be difficult. But I'm going to tell you what. They're turning off hundreds of thousands of people who are washing their hands of the Republican Party. They don't like the Democrats. They despise Elizabeth Warren and Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and those buffoons, those clowns. But they are sick and tired of voting for a bunch of dissembling, corrupt, crony Republicans who won't even do what they say they will do, who won't even take a stand, who announce defeat who announced surrender before the battle even ensues on the heels of a landslide election. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. This Republican Party had nothing to do with this landslide election. You had everything to do with this landslide election. You are sick of Obama. You're sick of the totalitarian mindset in this White House and the Senate Democrats. You want your country back. You want your Constitution protected. So you vote against Obama by voting for these pathetic, impotent, passive, childish, self-defeating Republicans. Absolutely incredible to me. Whatever the Republican leadership tells them. Number one, Jennifer Rubin. What a joke over there at the Washington Compost. But what do you expect? Number two, I can't even remember all of them. All over the blogosphere. You know what the big line is? Thanks to Ted Cruz and Mike Lee, Obama got all these appointments through he never would have gotten through. That is a flat-out lie, and it's been said for 48 hours now. I have an AP article in front of me here de- uh, uh, dated November 10th, where Harry Reid was plotting on pushing through a whole bunch of these nominees by hook or by crook. He didn't need Saturday to do that. He was prepared to hold them in for Christmas. So we actually have propaganda being pushed out of Mitch McConnell's office, out of the Republican leadership. That's a pretty funny line, isn't it? That's oxymoronic. Suggesting that it's Ted Cruz's fault that these nominees got through. By the way, on that point, Harry Reid, the dictator, the slime ball of the Senate, changed the filibuster rule so it doesn't apply to lower court judges and presidential nominees. Do you know what Mitch McConnell and John McCain and the other losers are prepared to do? They're going to reverse it. Put the filibuster rule in place. 
So then when we have a Republican president, then the Democrats can filibuster originalists who are being nominated to the courts after Obama, with a 51 majority vote, just packed the judiciary. What kind of party is this? What does this party stand for? It stands for nothing. I told you before I left last week what John Boehner and Mitch McConnell and scores of Republicans in the House and the Senate did. They disenfranchised you, and they undercut the incoming majority in the Senate. The reason they wanted to push this massive, monstrous spending bill through, and it is loaded with pork, ladies and gentlemen, would turn your stomach if you knew everything that was in it. 1,600 pages? Well, they wanted to get it through because it's Obama's budget, too. They've been working on it all summer long. And Boehner cut his deal with Obama, and McConnell cut his deal with Obama, and all these pathetic Republican sheep went along with it. Sixty-seven Republicans in the House said no. They said no. Eighteen, or is it twenty? I have the count here later. Uh, Republicans in the Senate, make that eighteen, said no. So, the overwhelming majority of Republicans in the House and Senate voted for Obamacare, voted for amnesty, voted to violate the Constitution and violated their oaths of office and undermined the last election and undermined your franchise. None of this was presented to you before you voted on the first Tuesday in November. None of these people said that they are working on a massive spending bill with Obama that will fund Obamacare and whatever imperial amnesty he executes. Not one of them. The Republican Party had a big victory in the last election, in spite of itself. Now it's in the throes of destroying itself. If a lifelong Republican like me, somebody who served in the Reagan administration for two full terms, who worked in his 76 and 80 primaries, who ran for office as a kid, 19-year-olds, and got elected to my local school board as a Republican. I'm 57. I've been a Republican since the day I could vote. If somebody like me is saying, I am one inch away from resigning, I suspect there are hundreds of thousands of you who feel exactly the same way. I will not participate in this scam. I will not participate in the dissolution of this republic. I will not participate in the propaganda machine that has become the Republican Party and its mouthpieces and cheerleaders in the pseudo-conservative media, whether it's cable TV or radio or websites. This budget was passed in the House with lie piled on lie. Boehner lied to one of the members to get the process under the way, told this congressman that we will pull this big bill and just do a temporary spending bill. When he got his vote, he reversed course, lied flat out to him. He called on Obama to call the Democrats to get the bill passed. And without them, it wouldn't have been passed. Then he goes to the Senate. God forbid if they have a 24 or 48 hour time period where they actually debate a point of order on the unconstitutionality of the imperial amnesty. No, we can't have that. Senators are busy. Yes, they want to go home. They've got arrangements for Christmas. There's party time. I got to shave and put a tie on. I got to, I got to, you, you understand. I'm not done. I'm just heated up. What the hell is the purpose of the United States Senate? What do they do? I'm serious about this, ladies and gentlemen. Who do they represent? They don't represent you. They don't represent the state legislatures as they did before 1913 and the 17th Amendment. Who do they represent exactly? Oh, they stand for election. Oh, they're re-elected because they lie. They dissemble. They distort. They spend tens of millions of dollars to do it. Now, let me tell you the Republicans who voted against the Constitution, that is against the point of order raised by Cruz and supported by Lee. Alexander of Tennessee, Barrasso of Wyoming, Coates of Indiana, Cochran of Mississippi, Collins of Maine, Corker of Tennessee, Cornyn of Texas, Enzi of Wyoming, Flake of Arizona, Graham of South Carolina, Hatch of Utah, Heller of Nevada, Johnson of Wisconsin, Kirk of Illinois, McCain of Arizona, McConnell of Kentucky. Murkowski of Alaska, Toomey of Pennsylvania, and Wicker of Mississippi. Never again, never again can these clowns utter 
any defense of the Constitution since they voted to certify Obama's lawlessness.